All right, at the top of this video, I want to make one thing perfectly clear. Regardless of anything else that I say in this video, regardless of what you think I'm saying in this video, I want you to understand, I love my bamboo. This 3D printer has done more to increase my ability to make than any other 3D printer since the first 3D printer that I got, the Replicator 1, over 10 years ago. And if you would like an illustration of how much I love using this 3D printer, this box represents a year of the waste filament from using my AMS system. And okay, we could have a discussion about the fact that this box should probably only be about half to maybe a quarter as full as it is. But look at this. Bottom to top, side to side, this box is full, brim to bursting of AMS waste. This is a year's worth of running this AMS system non-stop, using it like crazy. This is a lot of love right here. So whatever else I have to say in this video, I want you to understand that it comes from a place of love. And if you understand me, you understand that love and criticism are not mutually exclusive. And yeah, I'm afraid I do have a little bit to criticize here. <sighs> Where should I start with this story? Well, in this little container here, I have an example of the worst print that I have got out of this 3D printer. It's a print where I took one of my early printer block sets, the light mech and I wanted to make all of the pieces well AMS-y. I wanted to put as much color into them as I could so that they would look like a professional toy and my reason for doing this is uh, a topic for another video but this print that should have only taken maybe a day ended up eating weeks weeks of failed prints prints that came off with just so bad layer lines that weren't feeding well that they fell apart as soon as I pulled them off the build plate. The AMS system was just ruining this print and I couldn't figure out why. Now I, I do want to admit in this story that I made some mistakes and my first mistake was to well to make an assumption about what the problem was. I was using various rolls of filament. Some of them were in cardboard tubes, some of them were in slightly smaller spools, and these are not the sort of thing that the AMS is particularly well suited to do. So I thought the solution was that I needed to upgrade my AMS to the Hydra system. Now, it should be mentioned, the Hydra is a system for fixing exactly this problem, but if I'd have just contacted Bamboo Support right now, I would have saved myself a lot of trouble, a lot of headache, because this wasn't the problem. But we'll get to that in a little bit. Because even after upgrading to the Hydra, the problem persisted. And so I decided to finally break down and contact Bamboo Support. But around this time, Joel Telling had made a video about his AMS system having a problem. And of course, when Joel Telling contacts Bamboo and says, hey, I'm having a problem with my AMS, their response is, here, have four brand new AMS systems. And I wanted to know how they would respond to, well, just your average Joe. So I contacted them on my alt account and I didn't tell them that I was the 3D printing professor. And as our back and forth started and I said, well, here's the problem. And they said, well, it might be this. Could you try doing this? They eventually asked me to send them a video of the problem in action. I took that video and they saw that I had upgraded my AMS with the Hydra. And their response honestly wasn't that good. Their response was basically this. Well, it might be this thing over here, but we noticed that you have the Hydra upgrade and that is an unauthorized upgrade. We didn't tell you to do that. You have violated the warranty. Here is a link to the warranty so that you can understand that you violated it. And if I were anybody else, I would have taken this as, oh, well, I guess I have to do this on my own because they're not going to help me. But unbeknownst to them, I wasn't anybody else. I'm the 3D printing professor, and they 
were about to get schooled. My response to them was that, in my opinion, they needed to have an internal discussion about what they were going to do when they saw a Hydra. Okay, fine. I violated the warranty. I accept that I'm going to have to buy the parts to fix this, but you can't just wave your hand in the general direction of the parts that I need to fix. Please help me fix it. And to their credit, they backpedaled gracefully and said, no, you're right, the, the Hydra is actually a pretty cool upgrade, and we appreciate that you're trying to fix it. Let's see if we can get this sorted out. Now, the problem that I was seeing was, well, twofold. First of all, in the first stage feeder, it would sometimes report that it was out of filament when it still had filament into it, unless I took the filament and kind of pulled it to the right, and then it would recognize that it had filament in it. So that was one problem. Another problem was that, especially in the first and fourth stage feeders, it would sometimes feed in a bunch of filament and then it would get stuck. And the filament, the feeders would chew a hole in the filament, just, just absolutely gnaw the side of that filament and it wouldn't feed anymore. And sometimes if I were there and fast enough, I could push it in and it would keep going and finish the print but sometimes if I wasn't there it wouldn't and it would fail or it would cause a under extrusion on a couple of layers. And to fix this in the middle of a print what I would have to do is kind of pay attention to where the hole in the filament the chewed up portion was and then when the filament unloaded be right there pay attention to it pull it all the way out and clip it off and so this this was how much filament was running through the system before it chewed up a corner of it and then I would refeed it back in and it would work for a little while until it chewed another hole in it. So I, I have a lot of lengths of filament that are only about this long and what I'm probably going to do with these is I'm going to take these and run them through my Prusa and make some printer blocks because the Prusa does an excellent job of using up little lengths of filament right to the nub. Now I suppose somebody could make a joke about Prusa cleaning up Bamboo's mess, but the truth is I could feed these into the Bamboo, and the Bamboo does a pretty good job of, of feeding them almost to the nub as well. But, you know, if you wanted to make a joke about Prusa cleaning up Bamboo's mess, there's a comment section down there. So now, under Bamboo's direction, I took apart my AMS, I cleaned up the second stage feeder, I tried again, that didn't fix it, and they said, well, it might be the first stage feeder. These little blocks in the front of the AMS that pull the filament in to begin with. So I purchased two new first stage feeders for my AMS. Now I noticed that these first stage feeders were a little bit different than the first stage feeders that were in my AMS. Well, I mean, mostly it was aesthetic, right? These ones have yellow gears. These ones have white gears. I didn't think it was going to be a big deal. So I pulled out the first and fourth stage feeders and I replaced them with the new feeders. But something weird started to happen. Every time I tried loading filament into these feeders, it would push it out. It would, instead of pulling it in, run it the other direction. Turns out I have an old style AMS. Bamboo has upgraded the AMS system. They've come up with a new way of doing a lot of different things in here that are hopefully a lot better. But it means that those of us who have the early, early now mind you, this is like super early. This is like Kickstarter backer early. And if you've got one of those AMSs, the new parts aren't compatible with it. Now, unfortunately, it seems that anybody in this particular situation doesn't have a clear route forward. And I hope that, that means that there aren't a whole lot of people in this situation, but it also means that Bamboo doesn't maintain the parts for these old style AMSs. The new style AMSs are the only parts that they keep on hand. And I could be a little bit critical about that, but again, I hope that this is not a problem that a lot of people are seeing. So at this point, Bamboo Labs wanted to uh, maybe send me a new motherboard to replace the old motherboard with and see if that would maybe bring it up to snuff, but they needed to have my, my purchasing information for this one. And so at this point, the gig was up. I had to come clean and tell them that, well, I actually didn't buy <laughs> this machine. This was placed because I'm the 3D printing professor. And unfortunately, at that point, the conversation did change a little bit. 
their solution was to send me a whole new AMS. Now, I want to believe that if somebody was a Kickstarter backer, and if they persisted in keeping the dialogue going with support, that they would get the same treatment and would eventually get a replacement AMS system. But at this point, I just don't know. And, and that, that kind of bothers me. But what else bothers me is that when I took this AMS and hooked it up to my 3D printer, my 3D printer didn't recognize it. And I continued to work with support and continue to pull out my multimeter and do some wire traces, which I've never done before, and managed to trace it back to the motherboard on this system. And apparently, yeah, it's it's got a resistance value that it shouldn't have, meaning there's a short on the motherboard. And uh, yeah, that's not good. I thought they were going to say, ah, oh, well, we'll just send you a new motherboard to slap in there. And I was kind of looking forward to doing that because I figured if I was going to take it apart anyways, I'll just upgrade it to a Hydra now too. But they said that that might not be the problem, that it might actually be the power supply on this 3D printer, maybe feeding too much power into it, causing a short. If we put another motherboard in there, it might just short out as well. So here have a whole new Carbon X1 combo with a brand new AMS in it. Yep, I'm definitely in the influencer category here. And again, I hope that Bamboo Labs would treat their paying customers with this level of responsiveness, but I gotta be honest, I kind of worry for Bamboo Labs. Like, if they have to do this for everybody who backed their Kickstarter, they're gonna go out of business. It's wonderful, and, and I appreciate it. I really do appreciate having a whole new functioning unit. And I also appreciate getting an opportunity to see that this new unit is very, very different from the old one. This is actually just an empty box. I've already opened it. I've already unpacked it. I've already started working with it. And it is such a different experience from this one. It's already practically assembled. The AMS is, is ready to go and they packed the AMS on the inside of this. I don't think that they did that before. It's just, it's a much smoother experience. It's a much different experience. It's definitely an upgraded experience from what I experienced the first time around. So I can say for sure that Bamboo Labs is moving forward and doing better things. And if you bought a Carbon X1 today, you would get a much different and a much better experience than I got. And I will say, I got a good experience with this one and it's even better now. But now we come to the conclusion, the moral, the wrap up of this whole story. See, a lot of people are constantly asking me, hey, should I buy a bamboo? And while my experience was fantastic, my experience with this AMS unit also ended after one year. And that's been a big question on my mind. With any new 3D printer, the question isn't, is it good? The question for me is, will it be good in a year, five years, 10 years? Okay, 10 years is maybe asking a bit much, but I would expect to get, you know, more than just one year out of this particular unit. Now, I should mention that the rest of the bamboo is working fine. And right now, as long as I don't hook an AMS up to this, it's fine. I can print with single colors and I've got a lot of single color prints to print with it. So everything from here on down, still good, still going. And I'm gonna keep on using it to see how long it lasts. But it's a question of longevity. My number one recommended 3D printer in the past has been the Flash Forge Adventurer 3 not just because it's super easy to use, which it is, not just because it's super easy to maintain, which it is, but also because I have been using several of them now for five years and hardly needed to touch any of them. They just keep working and working and working. Five years of use from a $300 3D printer, that is phenomenal. Or there's Prusa. My Prusas are just workhorses. I'm using them all the time. Sure, they're not as fast or as fancy, but they continue to function day after day, month after month, year after year. 
And so the one thing that keeps me from wholeheartedly recommending Bamboo Labs is the fact that they haven't had the chance to prove their longevity and a situation like this makes me worry about it. Now, I don't think that Bamboo Labs is intentionally making machines that as soon as the warranty ends, they will fall apart. Although they are ex-DJI employees and I have not had good experience with DJI. But no, 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 I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt. I believe that they are trying to make a machine that lasts a long time. But they can't know that they've made a machine that lasts a long time until they've had a chance to test it for a long time. And that hasn't happened yet. So while Bamboo is great for the now, it hasn't had a chance to really prove itself long term, which is why when people ask me, hey, do I recommend the Bamboo? My response is, yes, but it's not like a firm yes. It just hasn't had the history that I have with other 3D printers. And this is also a problem with YouTube reviews. Like, it's very easy to make a video saying, well, I've had this and that a problem, but you're not going to get a video from me in a year or two years saying, yep, it still works after a year or two years or five years. That's just not a video that people are going to make. That's not a video that people want to watch. But do keep an eye on the comment section in this video. And if you're watching this video in a year or two years, ask me how this printer is doing and I will let you know how it's doing. If, if it's still going, maybe I will make a video in another year or two to update you on the longevity of this machine. And I suppose the question is, how long do you think that it should continue to run? How much do you think that you would get for the price that you pay for this machine? Would a year of service out of it be acceptable? Would two years be acceptable? Would you expect five years or would you expect more? And Keep in mind, the more you expect, the longer it's going to take me to answer the question. Well, that's it for this video. I want to thank you very much for watching and remind you again that you are a child of God. So you're special to me. So take care of yourself and if you can, someone else too. I'll see you next time.